That's great. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we come to uh, the next lecture of uh, this morning, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dennis O'Brien, who is a member of the South Society of Australian Genealogists and administrator of the O'Brien Surname Project. So, Dennis will be talking to us about surname versus DNA results, and what they mean, and what they don't mean. Uh, and in DNA terms, who are the O'Briens? We'll be talking about the O'Briens and the relationship to the Dalgosh, and also SNP markers versus STOR markers, and what you can learn from each kind. And then after Dennis's presentation, we have uh, the pleasure of being joined by the O'Brien, Connor, 18th Baron Inchiquin, Prince of Thomond, who will be joining us for a question and answer session at the end of this presentation. So can I ask you to give a warm welcome to both Leo O'Brien and Dennis O'Brien. Thank you, Morris. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Um, it's a long, uh, you'll have to excuse my accent a little bit, you know, Australians have picked up this crazy English-Irish combination of accents. Um, I've been the administrator of the uh, DNA project uh, for about eight years now and uh, uh, it's uh, one of those things that uh, I didn't plan for, uh, didn't particularly seek and then sort of just uh, rolled into it but I've got to tell you it's brought me uh, great enjoyment, pleasure and um, it's sort of a role where you get to help people and I think that's something, apart from my own research of course, uh, it's, um, it's very, very interesting. Um, I just want to cover, as uh, Morris has already said, uh, what's in a surname, why join your surname project, uh, some stats about our project. Um, who are the O'Briens? Uh, this has been one of the big question marks uh, over a period of time. Um, STRs, yes, versus SNPs, and uh, a little bit about maybe what's next. And I'd better uh, keep my arm on the time. So, um, I suppose that's the thing and it's the what in a surname that started all this. If you have a look at the O'Brien uh, project, there's actually not a lot of O'Briens there. there it's not a majority. Uh, O'Brien is a name that has uh, changed over many, many years. Bryant, O'Brien, Brian, spell it various ways. The Americans are amazing the way they can get uh, a word to change its, uh, <laughs> its spelling. Uh, and they're not the only ones. The Australians have done pretty well. And there's some even strange ones where people have just turned up with a name and you think uh, that can't be a related uh, name to the O'Briens, but actually it turns out it is. So um, it's a, a case of what are you looking for when you join us? And, you know, it's your family. A surname's your family. It belongs to something. If you're a Smith, a Jones, or an O'Brien, or a Gleason, whatever you are, it has something and means something to you. Um, for some of us, and you've got to understand that most of the people, as have been said before, who are in this uh, DNA uh, family, we're from the colonies. We, we left. We left in the 1700s and the 1800s or probably in the early part of the 1900s. Um, and most of us don't have any direct connection. Oh, I always knew from the time I was born that I was from an Irish Catholic family. That was pretty uh, brought into uh, plain view uh, you know, very early in the piece. But not a lot of other things, but to be Irish in Australia meant something. Uh, sometimes not always the best, but it meant something. And it'd be the same in America and many other countries. So it was a cultural homeland. Um, historical connections. You know, I live in a country where, in fact, from a DNA point of view, the oldest humans on earth live. The Australian Aboriginal has been there, give or take, 50,000 years. I don't think anyone else can beat that record. Um, so uh, we, we know about culture, but we as Europeans, we've only been there since the very, very late 1700s. 
um, the Irish were on the very first ship that arrived. So they've certainly been there from the beginning, but that was only in the 1780s. So we don't have a culture, and most of our culture is related to the way we're brought up, our religion, our education. Um, and it's, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day is as big a uh, ceremony in Australia as it is in New York or as it is here. We, are, uh, we, we ha tie back into our culture. Um, and, of course, an identity. We all want to be someone. We all want to belong to someone. And I find that most of the people who join uh, our surname project are looking for an answer. Um, but when you really get down to the why and say, what are you trying to do? A lot of it comes down to these little uh, points here, that they're trying to find a family connection. They have a cultural connection, that's pretty easy, uh, and they're looking for historical connections. Which part of Ireland they come from? Is there any interesting people in the family tree? I mean, we all would like to be relatives of kings, queens, or princes, or uh, someone wealthy. I mean, wealthy is better than any of the other three. But the point <laughs> is that we'd like, you know, we're, we're looking for that, aren't we? I mean, that's what it's all about. Um, and, uh, you know, so identity is something that we put a lot. And that's more from our point of view than probably the Irish point of view. The Irish know who they are. They know where they come from. Well, they think they do. But what we don't, we're the, we're the outsiders and we're trying to come back. So why would you join a program, uh, sorry, a uh, surname project? Well, there's a lot of reasons for it. I think most people join to look for a missing link. You could be that you're a small family and you've got a few aunts and uncles and you can get a bit of an idea, but you're looking for something else. It could be that you're on your own and you know very little about your family or its background, but, and you're looking for the missing link. You're looking to see, oh, look, we're Irish, we're Scottish, we're English. But then you're trying to find out and define that. Um, sometimes it's to prove a connection. I've been collecting data since I was 16, so it's 51 years ago I started this exercise, um, and I knew roughly about my family, immediate family, particularly my paternal family, the O'Briens, uh, because Irish Catholics, being what they are, they mixed a lot in that uh, period of time, and right up until the 1980s, we, we you know, big family meetings, weddings, uh, hatches, matches and dispatches, we call it, and you always got together, and you met your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, whatever. So it, that wasn't a problem, and I had that all down on paper in the old days, um, but there were missing connections. We had other people who were saying, oh, but we're cousins. And you say, oh, how? And then I came out to Ireland in 2001, and I went to where my family came from, and they said, yeah, but have you met the other family next door, the O'Briens, in the other town there? And they're as big as us, if not bigger. And I thought, oh, no, I didn't know anything about you guys. But I finally worked it all out. But there's no paper. The 1820s, give or take, um, much before then, you're not going to find anything. It's a mystery. So you've got to look for a connection. Uh, that was my introduction. In fact, my father and mother and I visited uh, Connor's house in uh, 2005, and Connor was telling us about this DNA, and we went, my dad and I went back and said, oh, that sounds an interesting way. Maybe we can find something. And I got uh, involved in doing that. Um, and I was looking for a missing link. I wanted to find out these cousins, how do they meet? We'll talk about that a little later. Occasionally, you're trying to find out who you really are. I have a lot of members in the O'Brien whose name is not O'Brien or anything even remotely related to O'Brien. But they don't know who they are. But when they do the DNA, they are an O'Brien. We have a person in America named Morrissey. Now, the Morrisseys live in various parts of Ireland, they're particularly down in the West, uh, not unusual. They've been in America for, uh, I think it was about 180, 200 years. DNA's showing they aren't Morrisseys. They're O'Briens, without any doubt in the world, very closely linked to the main O'Brien family. How did they get the name Morrissey? Why was it changed? And this is what some people are starting to ask the question. So there can be uh, an idea. So being an O'Brien, one of the things when we started this program and project uh, was... Uh, let's see who's not. We are very eclectic. As far as we're concerned, if you had the name O'Brien or any related name in any spelling form and you think you're an O'Brien, we're happy to have you in the clan.
you're an O'Brien. Connor insists on that. That you're an O'Brien, you're an O'Brien. So we look at two different things. There's the O'Brien as far as the name goes, and then the O'Brien as far as the DNA goes. And those things often show up a uh, little different angles. Of course, a lot of us would love a royal connection, wouldn't we? I mean, that's what it's sometimes a little bit about. And that's one of the things that people try and uh, look at. And they say, oh, but hold on. My father, my great-grandfather, he came from Clare and he swears that they were, uh, you know, they used to be at Dromolan and they were part of the original O'Brien family. And so, oh, fair enough, and you go through the test. Sometimes the end result disproves the family's history. But that's all right. They're still O'Briens and we still welcome them into, the, uh, uh, into our uh, clan and into our project. Uh, there is no permission... Uh, needed to join our project. I know some projects have uh, permission required. As far as I'm concerned, if you want to nominate joining the O'Brien's DNA, please, you're welcome. I don't, you know, whatever. I might look at your name and think, well, I wonder why, but sometimes when the markets come through and later the simps come through, it becomes obvious why. But um, as I said, we welcome anybody. Our project started on the 21st of October 2004, so it was its birthday yesterday, um, and uh, it was uh, probably uh, in the early stages of these projects. It was started by a gentleman named Mick O'Brien over in, or Mike O'Brien over in uh, America. Uh, he got an interest in that. It came out of some other conversations, um, and uh, it started small. I think uh, you know it took a while to get to 20 members, and then a while to get to 30. Um, but now we have about 510 members in the uh, surname project. We have 403 males. Why? Tests done. Not necessarily by the male. Uh, it's more like sometimes we get it from the sister or the mother or somebody else, a cousin uh, who's female obviously and wants a male connection, but the Y test. So we have 403 of those. We have 105 different haplogroups. SNPs different identifications. So it's a very wide grouping, the O'Briens. We have 50, uh, sorry, 34 members so far who have done the big Y. That's quite good for us. Uh, we've got, I think, uh, another half dozen or so that are looking at it, uh, but uh, it's expensive, and I'll talk a bit about that later, but uh, that's something we're uh, trying to encourage. And we have a lot of variations of spellings as well as non-related surnames at all. As I said, they're names that just, you, you wouldn't even, you wonder how would they even be raped. Sometimes, surprisingly, they are. So these are the sort of people that uh, join our group. So in DNA terms, who's an O'Brien? Or, as I would call them, an O'Brien or a related surname, is the way I headed up. Well, of course, there's those who are Delcash. We all know the clan, we know its history, um, its significance in Ireland history. Uh, they're members of the RL, RL226. Uh, Dennis Wright talked about it yesterday. And that's a significant grouping uh, within our uh, O'Briens. There's some who are now, I believe they call it, the M222, the Northwest Irish Lowland Scots variety. It's an interesting name. Um, and they've... Uh, group themselves as different uh, people over time, but they are uh, slightly related but quite distant from uh, the Dukash, but they have a very early uh, part in the Irish um, uh, history. There's a very small group that are Irish type 2. I'll be honest, I'm not up on too much on the Irish type 2, uh, but there is the, uh, a very small group of O'Briens or related surnames who have identified with that. And there's a rather large group that have nothing to do with the traditional R, uh, R1 or R1B uh, uh, groupings. Um, but some are Scandinavian. Uh, yeah, the Vikings came here. They probably did leave a few children around the place. Um, there's uh, many others. Um, the, that uh, uh, Middle Eastern. Um, there's a whole range of people. Uh, Romans, Italians, you know, the whole group. Mediterraneans. So... Um, there's, there's people in there. So we are very wide in our um, sampling and it just goes to show you the name O'Brien, well, how did you get that name or a related name? And uh, this is discussed before and I know it'll be discussed later. Uh, obviously people through political allegiance, 
um, or some other connection with uh, one of the powerful families at the time have adopted the name uh, and or there's been some other changes that have occurred. Or maybe there's just been some lying on birth certificates, which does happen occasionally. Membership breakdown out of uh, 305 members with an O'Brien related surname. So I had 510, I've got uh, 400 on the Y, 305 of them have an O'Brien related surname. Um, 92 of them at this stage um, are uh, M269 um, and uh, we're trying to get them to uh, further test. I have 51 uh, who are the same but they've got a variant surname, so 92 at O'Brien, 51. Um, Six of them belong to the group U106. Uh, six are, are still sitting at 311 very early. We, it's very hard. People spend money, people uh, do investment, they don't get what they want out of it and it's very hard to encourage them uh, to spend more money. Sadly, a few of these are no longer with us and I'll talk about that a little later. That's a problem that I think we're going to have to face up to soon. Um, 19 are still sitting at L22, uh, L21, which is a long time ago. Um, but they're not L226 and they're not uh, M22. Two, 10 M222, uh, 52 L226, 18 have now identified with FGC5659 and you are now starting to get into uh, modern history at this level. We, we believe, Dennis Wright and I believe, that this is starting to get around the Brian Baru area, uh, probably just before, but it's, uh, you're starting to get into some sort of notion of uh, historical content. Um, but 41 have non R1B SNPs. In other words, there could be I, I is very prevalent, uh, M uh, and E, I think, is the other one, but there's quite a few ranges in there. So, and that's represent 13.5%, but they still call themselves O'Brien, and so they should. We're happy with that. But from a DNA point of view, they've probably got very interesting histories. We need to uh, get into that and try and find more. O'Brien's and the Del Cash, well, around 25% of our members appear to have a relationship with this clan. Um, 28 haven't gone past the uh, M269, but we know from the SDR markers that's what they are. We're pretty confident with that, but we're, we're asking them to further test. Um, 15 have not tested below L226 yet, and we're trying to get them to do that uh, at the present moment. Uh, five, uh, there's 5660, uh, there's a couple and a few others, three are 5628, um, and you, sorry, I don't have made a mistake there, I apologize, it's 11 are 5628, and I'm, I'm, at this stage we think that's Brian Baru Snip. We're not quite sure, but we think if you could dig him up, and I think Connor's going to talk about that later, you can't, but if we could dig him up, we have a feeling that's what you might find. Um, and seven, uh, YFS231286, nice long number, but that one's very interesting because we do know who that is. That is the official line currently of the O'Briens, the Thorman O'Briens, Dromolan O'Briens, whatever you want to call them, it's the official line and I'll talk a little more about that shortly. SIPs versus STRs. Previous speaker probably uh, stole my thunder a little bit about that, and that's fair enough. Um, look, we all start with 12 markers. You know, if you get a wide 12 markers, you're going to be related to, I don't know, but a very wide proportion of uh, Europeans. You start going into 27, 35, I don't even know if they offer 27 anymore, I think it's now straight to 35, and that's some people, 37, something like that. And then you go to 67, and then if you really want to, if you've got a nice big fat wallet, you can go to 111. And that's going to start narrowing you down, uh, and that's what uh, is, is happening. Um, but even then, it's not necessarily going to link you up with someone. Um, the new SNPs, which are starting to come out and we're really getting them tested, is starting to identify people in a much better way. And in fact, that has been the key for us to be able to identify where the various O'Briens uh, fit together or the L226 grouping as a total. Um, there's a lot of cooperation between the L226 grouping ran by uh, uh, Dennis Wright and uh, the O'Briens for obvious reasons. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we're 
pushing our members as much as we can to try and identify them. So, and the new pack that's just the pack that was released by FTDNA um, recently, mind the way, four months later than they said it would be, but recently uh, has uh, we're hoping will give us a lot more information. We were hoping we would have had that information now, but we'll have to wait till next year's presentation. Um, so within our project, we're starting to place more emphasis on the um, SNPs, then look at the STRs and say, oh, wait a minute, if you're in a common SNP group, if you're uh, FGC or a YFS, now look at your markers and see if we can actually put you into some sort of tree. And that's uh, sort of what was talked about by the previous speaker in that, um, you know, getting your trees or the DNA trees uh, is something that we're trying to work on uh, a lot. I pulled an example, and I apologise. It, it looks like it's coming up uh, quite well. It's uh, a little Excel table I put together, um, and I wanted to do this because I want you to show that what's happening. Up until quite recent times, um, L2D6, we knew about it, um, and for a long time that was the end of the show. Uh, we said, "Oh, great, we've got L2D6. This is starting to identify people," and there were many, many people, hundreds of people in that. Uh, as new tests came on, particularly Big Y, we became aware that there were other SNPs, personal SNPs, many of them started off. Then we'd say, oh, hold on, so-and-so, other people have got these SNPs, so they became identifiable as part of a group. And we've um, worked them down the tree, and as I said, without, unfortunately, absolute proof, though we're going to be working on that soon, um, we think this is probably the timeline of uh, King Brian Brew. Um, and then you move them down, and then we got to this snip here. And this I talked about before, it's common to a range of people. And we thought, well, that's very interesting. What does it mean, and how is that going to be put together? So when we were doing this, we tested even more, and we found three very interesting groups. One we knew of, but three interesting. The first one was this uh, family here, BY4092. Evidence would show that somewhere between 1300 and 1500, a line of the O'Briens departed from the main O'Briens. They could have been the fourth son of the fourth son, uh, and by then you certainly don't get a title, and you probably don't get any land, so you're pushed out onto a farm uh, and uh, wished luck, and that was the show on the gate, and uh, that was the end of that. Um, so this group here split quite early. Um, they're common to this, but they're later than this. Um, this is a family from Limerick, um, Abingdon Parish. They've been there somewhere between 200 and 300 years, and uh, they've uh, uh, worked as farmers, uh, rural people, nothing fancy in their life. They were renters, not landowners, uh, and um, some even got kicked off the land when the English landlord came around in the late 1800s. So a general example of an Irish family. They've got some unique STR results, particularly up this end with this one, 4040. Um, they are, in fact, the only L226 people who have that particular STR. And that was identifiable fairly easily. Um, as it turns out, we know who they are. I'm one of them. My father's one of them. A third cousin in Australia is one of them. And a fourth cousin in Florida. Is one of them. So we've got a nice little grouping mix who we know who each other are, so we are able to identify that family. So that was, for me, very interesting, expanded well beyond what I was looking for, but took a while to get there. This gentleman's interesting. He's even later, um, and he's on his own. This group's out. He's on his own. Um, and he's a uh, gentleman, lives in Sydney, Descended of a convict, that's like royalty in Australia, I've got to tell you. Uh, <laughs> descended of a, a convict. Um, he has, um, he thought he was from England. He'd been doing a bit of work. The DNA came in and I contacted him and said, I, um, I think you're not just from England, I think you're actually from Ireland because there's no doubt he's got this, you're, you're an O'Brien. His name is Brian, as it turns out, but I said you're a no-brian. And he's done a lot of work, and he's still in research at this moment, but it could be <coughs> that he's from the Viscount Clare O'Briens. 
the line became extinct, but we found a very young boy living in England, parents had died, and he was being brought up by the in-laws, uh, and it's highly probable that that's where his family's come from. And we're working on that. It's a little bit uh, earlier, but it's looking good. So there's another family. And then, of course, we have another group that sort of we know of historically, uh, FGC 13418, because that's Sir Connor's line, and it was supported by um, another strange gentleman, uh, Tasman O'Brien, um, whose great-great-grandfather great -grandfather was William Smith O'Brien, of quite uh, fame in Ireland, uh, politically and otherwise. And um, so he uh, kindly had the uh, big Y, uh, Connor's had his big Y, uh, Tasman's had the big Y, and we've now concluded. So we're starting, this is what we're hoping over the next year, two years, three years, we'll, we, we'll be filling in all these blanks. So all of these trees will be really expanding enormously. And some people are going to find that they're post Brian Brew. Some people will find they're pre Brian Brew. But that's all right. We'll start to put them together. We'll be making sense out of it. So this is the sort of work I'm spending a lot more time on doing at the present moment. It's not perfect science. Some of it is a little bit of guesswork, but we're getting there and we think that uh, uh, as the refinements come through uh, and as people get more tested. Um, one of the things with L226, which is interesting, and uh, Dennis didn't actually mention yesterday, but to my knowledge, we, ex we at this stage haven't really found a non-Irish uh, of descent, uh, a European, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, the theory would be that at some stage, Mr. L226 should descend from somebody in Europe. That's the theory. And maybe Mr. L226, which uh, Dennis thinks uh, uh, was around two and a half, three thousand 3,000 years ago, um, must have been, uh, uh, should have been either European, or, but it looks like at this stage he may have just been an Irishman. We don't know yet. We'll find that out as time goes on. Um, uh, as I was mentioned before, we've got France and Spain. Those areas have not really gone into the DNA sequencing at this stage. So where does it leave us? Um, well, our clan is a clan. Um, we're quite happy to have people who believe they're members of the clan. The DNA is not to us that important. What we want to do is provide... So, so there's the O'Brien clan. And then on top of that, if you want to know a bit more and put yourself into a group, and, you know, you're not a uh, descendant of Brian Brewer, but you descend from some other uh, Irish uh, uh, significant figure or a Viking significant figure or something else, well, that's all right. You still know Brian. Um, and it uh, allows you to identify with the others and the interconnections and interrelationships. Um, I suppose what DNA research really does it uh, advances you down so that you can narrow your name. So an O'Brien, a Bryant, a Bryant, uh, a whole range of... And then you can start narrowing it down and start saying, ooh, how does that group fit in with others? Um, and that's what we, I think the benefit for a surname that DNA research is going to do is, is to really uh, put us into more historic groupings. Um, from what we've known in just the last few years, or since 2004, against what we expect, uh, the end is uh, almost unforeseeable because um, DNA is changing, the technology is changing. Um, we're, we're moving now into a whole new range of possibilities. Who knows, uh, I think it was Morris earlier said, maybe when the baby's born you will be able to just do a prick on the heel and find out who it is, where it's from. I don't know if mum and dad might be happy with that information, but you will, you, you'll certainly know. Uh, I'm sure there'll be confidential clauses coming in there, I can just say that. Um, however, as far as we're concerned, O'Brien is an O'Brien. Now, if you happen to be L226, that's good. If you happen to be post Brian Baru's DNA uh, or SNP, that's even nice. It's not going to give you a title. Connor will certainly tell you it gives you no money. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it, but it may be of interest to yourself. But one of the risks, and I have had this happen, it's a little, from my point of view personally, sad. I've had a couple of people who said, 
uh, one gentleman he, uh, about a year ago when it turned out he was um, definitely, he was actually M222, uh, therefore definitely not part of the Dalkesh group, and he said, oh, I'm glad my father's already passed away. He said he'd be so disappointed. Mm -hmm. He thought we came from Clare, and his family had always said that we were part of the Dromol and O'Brien. Now, he was happy enough to know where he belongs. He, he really is quite happy. In fact, he's doing a lot more research on it. But I've had that happen more than once in the last eight years. Um, and, but that's not what we're there for, but unfortunately that's probably one of the side events. A conclusion. Hmm. These Irishmen, please give us a sample. You know, the Americans can do it. The Canadians can We even have Mexicans. And we certainly have the odd Australian and New Zealander. So can you please get on to that family? I know they think they know where they're from. And they probably have lived in that village for too many years. But the point is, we do not have a very good... We need a much larger grouping and matching. If we're going to do more research, the Irish need to be far wider tested. It is actually becoming a little bit embarrassing because until we do that, uh, we'll be uh, really uh, getting to that. Um, I think FDNA, FTDNA have done a great job. Uh, I've had my arguments with their owners and other people over the time. I do think it's a bit expensive still uh, to get people in. Um, I know I've probably spent two and a half thousand Australian dollars, which is about what two thousand seventeen hundred US dollars. Um, and uh, I don't mind, you know, it's part of. I don't smoke or drink, so you see, that's my. But but I don't mind that. But at the same time, that's a lot of money for people to uh, get involved in. And the trouble with a DNA is if you get that small test, which is what's the current bargain? It's about sixty euros or something. Yes, hundred and something euros. If you get that small test, I've got news for you. That's not the last euro or dollar you're going to spend. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It gets worse. <laughs> One of the most exciting things is when I uh, was able to find out about Renee, who spoke yesterday, about the um, the Barrymore project. Uh, and there's a big uh, chart up the back there. Um, it sounds really crass when you tell people that your next ambition is to go and find someone, dig them up, and have them tested for DNA. But that's now what we're probably going to look at it. It'll take three, five years. We've got to get the money, we've got to do the crowdfunding, and we've got to get a hell of a lot of permissions. O'Brien's tended to be buried in rather important places, but we will get there. We have one who's over near the Vatican, and that's even a problem. So we're, um, we'll, we're going to find time. It's now become my sort of uh, aim, and I think it will be exciting. And we know where some of Brian Baru's children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren are buried. So we will be able to do that as time goes on. And that will just change the way we look at the whole um, SNPs and the, and the timeline. It would confirm things because you know when these people are alive. So that's the big one. I look forward and hope I can return here one day. It's a long trip. It's about 36 hours when you add in all the stopovers. So uh, it's a long trip and I won't say it's cheap. Uh, I'd especially like to thank my members. Look, uh, some of my members are amazing. I go out to them on an email and they just say, oh, no worries, Dennis, we'll spend another $60 or whatever. Um, and they're really, really good. Um, Kevin O'Brien, or Kevin James O'Brien in Buffalo, needs a special mention. That man comes to Ireland, I think at least once a year and probably twice a year. Um, he haunts his relatives. He, he has got more Irish specimens on our DNA list than anyone else. Would you agree, Dennis? He's the, he's the Irish. He haunts them. He absolutely drives them crazy. He goes out there and sticks it in their mouth. <laughs> so I really give him... Uh, and of course he's our walk the why guinea pig and without him well I'm not going to say without him we wouldn't have found what we found but he'd certainly made it and I've got to thank Connor um, you know we as far as I know we're the only surname project of a significant family whose head has been game enough to give us their DNA and you know it could have been a risk <laughs> I don't know how we would have explained a Viking or, uh, or a Middle Eastern or something, it is, but it, it gave us the measurements. And it, he's, he, Connor has never 
not let me use his DNA and I've expanded on it and we've done the big why and all that. He has always been supportive. So I really do appreciate that because it, it makes us, it, our lives easier. But it's a measuring stick. And when you've got a yardstick with a nice paper trail plus the DNA, wow, it makes running a project a lot, lot easier. So thank you very much. Um, yep, thank you very much. And uh, I'll answer questions after Connor speaks. Thank you very much, Dennis. And please give a quick uh, welcome for the O'Brien, uh, Sir Connor O'Brien, 18th Bar Institute, and Peter Cronin. Um, you're going to say a few words, who you are, yeah. how you got involved, and why they are. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I have to thank Dennis and uh, um, all those who've been involved in the O'Brien DNA scheme. It started, as uh, Dennis said, in 2004. Mike O'Brien ran our uh, clan website <coughs> and got into DNA. Uh, Kevin joined and, of course, Dennis Wright as well. Now, the O'Brien clan are supposedly about 850,000 strong. So there's plenty of revenue there for the <laughs> DNA project to, to get Crap their teeth funny. around. We're, in fact, the fifth most numerous Irish clan. And as you probably all know, the Murphys are the most numerous. I think probably the O'Briens, the O'Connors, and the O'Neills were so busy fighting each other probably <laughs> most of the time that the Murphys were off doing other things, and now there are more, <laughs> more of them. The reason to participate, really, for my participation, was because of my pedigree. I'm actually the 32nd in direct descent from Brown Brew, and uniquely, it's more or less totally confirmed by documentary evidence. I mean, the, the history of Brian Baru and the Kings of Ireland um, is well written. And I don't think many people would dispute that. Maybe some Irish historians might. But we descend from Brian Baru, who was Ardri, or High King of Ireland. He was King of Thomond and King of Munster. And continued right up until the middle of the 1500s, when in 1543... Murrah, who was the Tainist, he was standing in for uh, Donna, his nephew, uh, was forced, really, had no choice but to submit to King Henry VIII. And on the 1st of July, 1543, went over to Greenwich and handed in his kingdom and said he would be a good boy, but he wasn't all that good. He didn't uh, immediately change his religion. Um, but... That happened to many of the, the chiefs at that time, and we've been criticized for it, but the proof of the pudding is we're still here. Um, those who didn't take the king's shilling probably disappeared and didn't play the same part in Irish history. And that has really been a reason that we've been able to, to genuinely trace our family heritage. The Viscounts Clare, Baron Inchiquins, the Earls of Inchiquin, and the Marquises of Thomond uh, are all the titles of the main branch of the O'Brien family, many of which died out. But because of the fact that Murrah was the Tainist, we can go back to Murrah, and we would, I descend from uh, Murrah, who was the first Baron Inchiquin and the Earl of Thoman for his lifetime only. Particularly interesting lectures yesterday, and particularly the Barrymore project on digging up your ancestors. Um, Morgan Llewellyn, some of you may have heard of, who wrote the book Lion of Ireland, um, which is still supposedly going to be made into a film, hasn't happened yet. She was researching documents in the Oxford Library, and she came across an entry in 1870 that the Royal Engineers were um, excavating in Armagh Cathedral, which is where Brian Brew was buried. And they dug up this skeleton, which was six foot or just over six foot in length, which Brian Brew, by tradition, was supposedly 
a six foot man, a big man. And he, they contacted the government, the British government, obviously, um, and said, we think we found the bones of Brian Baru, what should we do? And they were told to smash them up because if the Irish heard of this, they would rise up again and there would be another uprising. Whether that's true, I don't know. But um, I've been up to Armagh many times. I've spoken to the dean of the cathedral and they don't really know exactly where he was buried. So the chances of digging Brian Brew up are pretty slim. His son, Dunner, who uh, didn't fight in the Battle of Clontarf because he was further south fighting in Leinster. Um, he wasn't the greatest uh, king after Brian Boru, and in 1064 he repaired to Rome where he handed in the crown, which I presume was Brian Boru's crown, to the Pope. And he was buried in St. Stefano's Basilica there, and that's still in existence. And there's a, pic, there's a carving of the crown above him. Now, I don't know whether he's actually underneath it or not, but that is a possibility, um, although extremely unlikely. We've done some research and we've made uh, various um, requests to the Vatican, but we continually get the same reply that <coughs> they don't let information out on what is in the Vatican. We wanted to find out whether the crown was still there or whether, as some historians say, the Pope gave it to Henry II when he became uh, King of Ireland or Lord of Ireland. Was Lord, of, Lord of Ireland, yeah. So we're looking for probably a junior Monsignor who is down in the depths of the Vatican looking after the the artifacts, and if anyone knows of such a man, would you let me know, because that's the only way we'll ever find out whether there is a record of that in the archives, whether it is still there, or whether it was handed to Henry II. If it was, the chances are it was melted down at the Cromwellian times to pay for the uh, Cromwellian armies to come over and fight the Irish, which would be a, a a great shame if that was the case. There are, as Dennis says, many other um, descendants of Brian Brew from the 11th and 12th century who are buried in Clare, and maybe one of them would be the one to look at to actually go back and see if we can get any DNA from them. But that's a long process and by no means guaranteed. Um, I have to thank everyone, and particularly Morris, for an excellent symposium, um, a fascinating. I know virtually nothing about DNA. Um, I should know more. Um, and I found the lectures I've attended in the last two days fascinating, and maybe I will become a little bit more experienced in, in the fine art of DNA. And I thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. We have time for maybe a couple of questions. Uh, so any questions for Sir Connor and Dennis? Let's have a question here. Thanks both for a very interesting and exciting presentation. My question really relates to maybe uh, to both of you. Many historians have written about the first Joyce Thomas D. Orff marrying Nora O'Connor, Nora O'Brien, the Princess of Thomond, daughter of Carlock around 1300. Have you either through genealogy or through DNA checked uh, indeed if that is now substantiated? And if so, there you could potentially adopt the whole clan of Joyce's being descendants of the O'Briens. Uh, now, at this Joyce stage, Lane. Joyce Blood, okay. Yeah, at this stage, no. Uh, and I, I think, uh, look, that's the sort of thing that may become more obvious uh, when the L226 expands uh, with SNPs coming in. So, uh, look, hey, hold on, next couple of years, you could just see us knocking on your door. <laughs>
Okay, we have a question here from Jared. Yes, you're speculating on the age of L226, so it's an uh, elder brother, and the F21 was found in Rotten Island, so 4,000 years ago, so we already know that. Uh, but it, the estimated TMRCA of uh, the F21 the, of, of L226 is 4,300. So it's probably they'll be careful. Uh, that would make in, sense. Uh, but in Ireland or on the right? Yeah, right. And, that's, and that's, look. And, 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 and technically, very, very quickly, yeah, my go. favorite O'Brien by far is Chateau Haute-Brion. Part of the Dillon Vineyard. It's not bad. I agree with that one. I don't know what the DNA is, though. <laughs> we have a last question down here. Uh, Jared, 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 Jared. Hello, Dennis. I'm an uh, O'Brien as well. Um, you were Thank talking you. about not enough of us in Ireland uh, testing. Uh, do you have any breakdown as to the proportion of people from each country who are, who are members of the group? Or do you have any idea? Look, I could do that. Uh, I, I would, I'll be honest, if memory serves me right, it's about that many out of the 500 that are living in Ireland. Uh, some might only be a couple of generations, like most of my family that have been tested, none of my Irish family have been tested, but the non-Irish have. So I'm just saying, it's, uh, yes, it's, uh, a con obviously is one, but uh, I'm just saying, it, it would probably be half a dozen, maybe a dozen at the most. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. it's a very small, very small, and we need to really work on that. That's probably the one thing we haven't done a lot of, and we need to market it. And we've got to probably. I haven't tried to get FT Bennett at FT to do a freebie for a while to just see if we could get some people, but uh, I didn't get down that one. Um, but anyway, that's it. Uh, well, maybe the, I could make a start by presenting both of you with a free DNA test oh, to use nice. on whoever you so desire. So, um, if there are any O'Briens in the audience. You might be able to persuade one of these gentlemen to give you a free Y DNA test, um, but uh, I will leave it up to yourselves to decide that. Uh, obviously, we need as many Irish people to do the, the DNA testing because that helps anchor the diaspora of Brian's or whatever surname you have in Ireland. We need the local native Irish who always stayed here and who can trace their families back for generations to do the Y DNA test in order to help our diaspora relatives to connect with their ancestral homelands. So please can I ask you to join me in giving a very, very big thank you to Sir Conor O'Brien and Dr. O'Brien. Thank you.